Kamen Rider has seen a decline in ratings ever since Agito, and a lot of people might feel it's because of how different the seasons have gotten ever since then. However, not everything is about ratings as we all might know certain shows or movies that weren't praised during their release, but looking back are better than ever, regardless of what a number states. All it takes is the right audience to turn something around. Previous seasons have had pretty serious tones. Sure, there are humorous moments, but the stories and themes for the overall shows are... You can see for yourself with the drama alone. Then came along a preview for the next show. It was colorful, looked lighthearted, and seemed like it had plenty of slapstick, along with the usual good-looking protagonist. I mean, having our main character debut by getting stuck on a tree is pretty funny, and it makes me like him from the start. To make his luck even worse, one of his bicycle tires pops, his wallet gets robbed, and gets beaten up. He's Nogami Ryotaro, basically the unluckiest man alive. He wakes up dusting off sand from his clothes. Next to him is what appears to be a boarding pass, and being the nice guy that he is, Ryotaro goes to the police station but opens the door to a desert and a train steward is offering him coffee. After that awkward interaction, the train itself rides next to him. With more bad luck, Ryotaro runs into the muggers from earlier, but he's gotten stronger out of nowhere, almost like he's possessed as a young lady stands by watching him. A sandy monster tries to talk to him, but the girl interrupts, saying that Ryotaro is a singularity point. Someone that might have the power to become Dano. That time is now since a monster appears from out of the muggers. Is it? This is Kamen Rider Dano? Well, it's his base form called Platform, which has his own monster take control of it with the press of a red button. Once the enemy monster is defeated, the girl and Ryotaro board the time traveling train. What a strange start for a Kamen Rider series, huh? Nothing will top Hibiki opening with a musical number, but I mean more in a narrative sense. In early Heisei, most first episodes were standalone that introduced the protagonist getting their base form. Here we got just a little more, and I'm not sure how I can even explain it. The main points are tone and a newer structure. As I said, early Heisei was pretty serious. Here we got Ryotaro's no good, terribly bad day and coffee. First episodes, of course, are meant for setups and introductions, though they're mostly standalone without getting too deep into the plot just yet. Dano reintroduces and will popularize the two-episode structure. That's the usual setup, but we also have a B-plot that won't get resolved until its second episode, along with some minor details such as Ryotaro's sister, Nogami Airi, running a cafe called the Milk Dipper. The other main plot point has one of the boys that beat up Ryotaro named Tetsuo lost their keychain so a monster quote-unquote helped him look for it, and since Ryotaro is unlucky, he got mixed up in this mess. It may not seem like much, but just wait, it's more than just fun monster fights. Speaking of introductions, the stewardess is named Naomi, who may or may not be possessed by an Imogen by the streak in her hair. Who knows? She works in the Denliners Cafe and won an award in real life. What award is that? You're gonna have to google it or read the comments, I'm sure someone there will tell you. Some might recognize her actress as the one who played Mana in Agito, and she's not the only returning actor to play a new character. Dano surprisingly has a lot of them. The red monster that fought as Dano will later be known as Momotaros, which some might know from the folklore Mom Momotaro, the son of a peach. I think you can connect the dots from there. What does Dano's sword form helmet look like? A peach. Ryotaro later says that Momotaro's looks like one of his childhood heroes, and uh, alright, alright, but we're getting off track. <laughs> the girl, Hana, made a contract with the Denliner's owner named Owner. He's quite the enigma. <laughs> Knowledgeable, but mysterious, since not even he knows how all this came to be in the first place. Hana explains that the monsters they're fighting are called Imogen, time travelers from the future who can grant wishes but in exchange for being able to enter the past, and most of them aren't friendly. Side note, I've heard the monster name pronounced in several ways, including within the show. Some characters say Imagine, others pronounce it like the English word Imagine. I'm personally used to saying Imogen, but I'll say it both ways throughout the video. The Denliner travels through the sands of time with Dano to combat these threats, and Hana is here to help because she has a bit of backstory with them. Ryotaro notices a keychain that Tetsuo was looking for and offers to take it back to him. Ryotaro returns it, completing the Imogen's contract, allowing him to use Tetsuo as a gate for time travel. Hana asks Tetsuo if he remembers a certain date. On December 24th, 2004, Tetsuo was too late in visiting his mother at the hospital before she passed, but she left a final Christmas present, a keychain. 
Imagine go back to the person's most powerful memory to wreak havoc in the past and affect the future. This is where Dan-O comes in to fight off the Imogen and fix the present with a singularity point. Someone who can remember the current time for the past to be restored. And weirdly enough, we have a quick glimpse of a man in a brown coat. Make note of that for later. The Imagine fights aren't the only things that can be fixed. Minor events can be changed too, such as Ryotaro taking Tetsuo to the hospital in time to see his mother once more. Wasn't expecting to feel sad, huh? <laughs> Here's a personal thing. Before watching Dan O, what little I knew came from its cameos, and my impression wasn't the best. Oh, the imaging group are just slapstick. Yeah, that got old fast. So that was my expectation going in. At the very least, the show can't be annoying for 50 episodes, right? It'll be a lot of fun. And it is fun. Then we get a story about how Tetsuo's late mom left him a keychain as a final Christmas present. Quite an opposite structure from past seasons. And I like it. Mostly because the pacing is one of my favorite parts of this season. Think back to how Momotaros was introduced. Give him two extra episodes, great storytelling included, to let you know how he is. Then do that three more times for three more characters. That doesn't sound so good on paper, but the pacing is well done. Especially with the great writing. It's why I like these first 16 episodes of Dan O. In episode 5, Ryotaro bumps into a boy where shenanigans happen that leads them to being sent to the hospital. You've probably noticed how Ryotaro's look changes when he was possessed by Momotaros. In the hospital, we see him with a blue streak in his hair and with blue eyes. Whoever's possessing him is very smooth, even making the hospital director fall for him. Momotaros fights back and argues with his blue Imagen all the way to the den liner. Since Ryotaro called the red Imagen Momotaros, Naomi follows up by calling the new Imagen Urashimitaros, or just Urataros. <laughs> oh look, there's the meme of Momo swinging his leg with that plug lock. As things start to settle, Urataros decides to join them, allowing Ryotaro to gain Den O rod form, and a new piece for the Den Liner. Older Tokusatsu CG is so outdated, it's become kind of a novelty to see it on screen now. <laughs> Episode 9 has Ryotaro bump into an Imagine possessed man, who looks oddly familiar. This is another actor you've probably seen around other toku shows, and even in the Reiwa era's first writer season. Wink wink. Hana finds out that the yellow Imagine isn't doing anything evil, he just wants to help his contract holder to do karate again. Then the Imogen later realizes that he only knows sumo wrestling, so he couldn't really be much help in the first place. Hana has a soft heart towards this one, which is rare considering she's been aggressive towards Momo and Ura. But since the yellow Imogen starts to disappear, Hana decides that she wants him to stay. So Ryotaro allows the newly named Kintaros to possess him. Our last main Imogen pops in the beginning of episode 14. As in, he literally just appears in the den liner. He wants to be called Ryutaros. His shtick is that he wants to kill Ryotaro because someone told him to, but then doesn't when he sees Aidi. That's kind of it. Together these four are the Taros, Momo, Ura, Kin, and Ryuta. A big reason Deno got so popular is because of the Taros, and I mean, yeah, just look at them. Their designs are fantastic and their personalities are just as good, barring some personal opinion. Their catchphrases alone are swarming with fun. Ore, Sanjo, or I have arrived. Mind if I reel you in? My strength has made you cry. Mind if I defeat you? I can't hear you. Man, I love that kind of cheesiness. Plus, each Taros is unique. Momo Taros is the aggressively blunt red Oni. Uda Taros is the suave, womanizing turtle. Ryo Taros is a fun, dancing dragon. Kintaros is a tough, immovable bear. Which, I don't see the bear motif, but I digress. Let's have that be the question of the video. Who's your favorite Taros or Imagen? It doesn't have to be any that we know now, it can be any of the future friendly ones that are coming too. My personal favorite is Ura Taros because of how suave he is, and he has a pretty neat design. <laughs> The four personalities work off each other perfectly, and that's not even including Ryotaro, which unfortunately I don't have the fondest opinion of, but I think that's for understandable reasons. Ryotaro feels kind of bland on the surface, and only because he's someone you're supposed to connect with. He's the one lost in this world, and his feelings are who you go with the most. Or at least, I connect with the most. In real life, I'm mostly quiet and I feel like I have the worst luck sometimes. Well, Ryotaro is timid and deals with bad luck on an episodic basis, which I really enjoyed. Some Heisei Phase 2 protagonists are supposed to have these quirks, right? And they're shown or brought up only a handful of times. 
Ryotaro's quirk of having bad luck is seen in every episode. It's not something that goes away just because he's a superhero now. It's how he is, and I love that. Not to mention that Ryotaro's actor, Takaru Sato, is talented. He had to act as several different personalities and having a Taros dub over him when possessed, and it looks really natural. It must have taken a lot of hard work and talent. Together, the Taros and Ryotaro are Kamen Rider Dano, probably one of the furthest departures of any Kamen Rider design we've had so far. This is definitely where we start deviating into something we wouldn't expect from the franchise, and to me, the next biggest departure won't be for another few years. Currently, I think that anything can be a Kamen Rider. Heck, we've even had one that's literally a motorcycle with eyes. But back then, well... At least Deno looks really cool. Each form has really nice shades of colors and unique armor that go on top of the base suit. Even platform has a unique feel to it. Sword form is sleek. Axe form just looks really powerful. Gun form has some neat artistic flair and rod form is... blue. I just like each of them and they bring abilities that are used for certain fights even after receiving some power-ups. I think I can say that I like Deno's aesthetics in general, including the CG. Something as simple as Owner wearing a clean suit or Hana having the black and white outfit just adds a little bit of personality. As ironic as it sounds with having flatter colors compared to the brightness of the Taros. Plus, the Sands of Time look gorgeous, especially with shots of the Den Lighter riding through and you see that beautiful aurora overhead. Man, I love that. If possible, please watch the season a high quality like Blu-ray. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Why am I even talking about this stuff now? There's way more to bring up and we've only barely reached the halfway point. Well, there are a couple more things to catch you up on, specifically the people that aren't Den know themselves. Starting from the first episode, it seems like a lot of men fell for Idy. She's cute and warms your heart with her coffee. There are two people who orbit her, basically. They're always around and do things to have Ayuri notice them. They're not important and mostly human comedic relief, but I needed to bring them up somehow. Ayuri, of course, isn't interested in their advances because she used to be engaged. However, she doesn't remember her engagement. Her fiancé's name or even that a telescope in her cafe was important to her. Ryotaro has memories of them together, but they're vague. He barely knows her fiancé's name. Sakura Yuto. All that's left are memories of them looking at the stars. Sakura Yuto owning a telescope and a pocket watch that says, Let the past bring hope. Meanwhile, every episode shows a man in a brown coat whenever an imagined time travels. Remember him? To be honest, I'm having a tough time thinking back to when he appeared. In episode 17, Ryotaro has his typical Imogen fight, but then he runs into the man and accidentally drops a pocket watch. Ryotaro returns a watch to him and catches a glimpse of his face. Then memories start flooding back. Ryotaro tells the Denliner crew that it was Sakura Yuto. One day, he just disappeared, leaving behind a couple of mementos. Aidy was devastated, but moved past it all, acting like nothing happened. Owner is curious. Not many can time travel, so why does this mystery man show up with the Majins? After returning to the present, Ryotaro suggests looking for him. Then a young man tells him that doing so would be inconvenient. He pulls out a ticket and introduces himself as... Sakura Yuto. Hey everyone, I am Hiha Kong, or just simply Alex. Kamen Rider Deno is one of my favorite writer seasons ever. Deno has such an amazing sense of humor and an amazing cast of characters that play off each other so well. One of my favorite scenes is from episode 1 where Ryotaro is stuck, stuck in that tree on his bike. Not only is it peak comedy, but it also serves as an amazing introduction to the tone of the series and to one of my favorite writer pro tags. I originally thought... Ryoto was super whiny and annoying, but then I, I realized he isn't. He's just an unlucky, awkward mess that just wants to help others and is willing to put others over himself whenever he can. His journey as a character is one of my favorites as we see him start off as absolutely weak and unable to fight by himself. But seeing him slowly growing stronger and stronger until he's able to fight on his own. Speaking of the Imagines, they're all precious babies and they must be protected. Especially the big baby that is Momotaro's. God, I, I just love all of them and how they become such an amazing and tightly knit family. And, and finally, I'm, I'm going to talk about my favorite part of Deno, that being my boy, Yuto Sakurai. 
He's such an amazing antithesis for Ryoto's beliefs and the whole season's theme of how the past should give us hope. It's hard to have hope if there's no past to begin with. It's such a tragic concept and I absolutely love it. All right, I think that's going to be it for me. Thank you to Marcos for having me on this segment. This is Alex signing off. Hey everyone, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Please leave a like or consider supporting us if you really want to. I mean, it would mean a lot to me if you could. Um, real quick, Sakura Yuto's actor is giving me some weird flashbacks. Oh no. Kamen Rider Yuto walks off laughing to himself, and his Imogen, Deneb, says he wasn't acting very nice. Then he gets tackled for accidentally ripping Yuto's shirt. On the den liner, Ryotaro feels like something's off about Yuto, because he remembers a kinder person. Yuto visits Airi's cafe and doesn't appear to be a fan of her coffee. Ryotaro goes in to stop him before doing anything rash, but Yuto yells out his name to her, despite her not knowing who he is. Ryotaro's had enough and wants to fight him. They each get possessed by their own Imogen, and... And... After a battle with an Imogen, Yuto tells Ryotaro to stop messing with time because Yuto is going to be the one to fight the Imogen alone, along with Deneb and his own train, the Zero Liner. Owner explains that the Den Liner is just one of many trains on the sands of time. But the strange part is that Yuto shouldn't have the Zero Liner, because it was destroyed in a different timeline. The Yuto we know is a younger version of Sakurai Yuto, the man in the brown coat. So to make things easier, I'll be referring to the younger one as Yuto, and the older as Sakurai. And an Imogen appears along with Sakurai, but Ryotaro is struggling. So Yuto reluctantly pulls out a green card and a belt. <laughs> Dang, that's a nice suit. I might even have to buy an SH figure art of it. The only thing I don't like is the ox motif for the visor. Everything else is great. The colors, the design, the... Trash bag for a cape? After the battle, Yuto berates Ryotaro for being weak. Ryotaro retorts, he's fighting because he has to, and he'll do what he can, because that's what Sakurai told him. With that, we got our two writers, and their rivalry. Episode 23 and 24 introduces us to a new Imogen, Sieg. He's an arrogant guy that wants help returning a baby that he just so happened to find. After a while, he starts to disappear because his contract holder was the baby, and babies are still developing so they can't remember much. Before he disappears, he possesses Ryotaro to become Dano wing form. <laughs> Through a loophole, Sieg is able to live by traveling to the past. Sieg felt like he just came and went, huh? He's just one of many events that are connected together, such as Ryotaro waking up in the dinosaur age. Momentaros once said this. Time travel is weird. This Yuto doesn't look like the same one from before. Zeronos is fighting a cool looking Kamen Rider, and the Taros actually fighting outside of Dano? We're seeing different time periods, but that's impossible. Except for one way. A Yuto from the near future takes Ryotaro to defeat a villain named Gao, which leads us to the summer movie, Ore Tanjo. What the? I guess the budget really fell for Deno? This is the image and anime style that the movie opened with. Yeah, the Taros got so popular that they got their own anime. It's not the traditional kind of anime you're thinking of, but it still counts. It wasn't anything like SD Rider, although it had this cutout feel, and it was cute. Going into the movie, it has Ryotaro and Hana go back in time to find an Imogen from the previous episode. However, the Den Liner gets stolen by Gao and he has the Taros locked up. Ryotaro figures that he's in the time of his younger self, so he goes to the cafe where he sees himself as a 10 year old, who he calls Kotaro to avoid confusion. Gao's plan is to find God's Train, a liner that can travel anywhere in time. I know that sounds just like the Zero Liner and Den Liner, but um, no you. Yuto arrives in time to fight him, but Gao has a transformation pass. Kamen Rider Gao looks so good, and with a color scheme we don't get too often for Kamen Riders, the battle is quick as Gao sends Yuto and the crew around time. They end up in the Edo period, because... of course. 
and we get to see Kotaro get possessed to become Mini Deno. I like seeing stuff similar to what Geki Ranger took Huger and now Deno just did. It's adorable, though I understand why it's not done that much. The next day, Gao's plan is almost complete, until Owner breaks the Taros out to fight Gao's army of ninjas. <laughs> oh look, it's Tadakoro from Kabuto. This is where we see the Taros fight, and Sieg is here too. Of course. Then Gao unleashes God's train to erase time, including the time where Ryotaro was born. Um, uh, well, time travel stories usually have the criticism of, if you can time travel, then go back to the point where this began and stop it. Uh, Gao kinda did. <laughs> Until Yuto arrives with Ryotaro's from the other timelines to stop him. Time is restored, and Kotaro boards a den liner to see his parents again. Oda Tanjo is... okay. At least with Kamen Rider Summer movie standards. Really, the most interesting part is how a few episodes were strictly dedicated to building up to the movie. It literally starts where the previous episode ended when Ryotaro was chasing after an Imogen who was gonna rob jewelry. I think that's a neat idea. We get to see how each Ryotaro was taken and even a bit of backstory to God's Train. Even more nice ideas. Everything outside of that was... okay. It was interesting enough, and that's all I can ask for a Tokusatsu movie. I do wish we knew more about Gao other than he's a time thief fan... yeah? I mean, he's cool enough as a mysterious evil figure, but he also looks kind of bored being here, so maybe that rubbed off me a bit. Adding on to what I said, episodes are tied directly to the movie, and that includes the episode that comes after. Before we get to the rest, I asked the Kamen Rider Amina what their thoughts on the season were, and here are a couple of my favorite responses. Note that these are slightly edited to avoid spoilers that we haven't gotten to yet. Kame-kun says, I love the whole concept of time and how no matter how painful memories can be, it's more painful to forget them than have to live with a sense of emptiness. Some guy says, Funny thing, while I was hosting a Japanese exchange student, I asked him what his favorite Kamen Rider was. He said Deno. After he left, I began to watch it for myself and I indeed fell in love with it. It has so much personality that I see why he liked it. So I gotta thank him for furthering my interest in the series and into the season. Thank you, Kamen Rider Amino. Kamen Rider Deno. You, you start in episode 28, an Imogen from Gao's crew is still around. The Taros and Ryotaro try to fight him, but something is wrong. The Taros, minus Momo, are fading. The other Ryotaros were possessed by different Taros to fight Gao, but since time was erased during that fight, our current timeline acts as if Ryotaro doesn't remember, even though he himself knows clearly what happened. However, no one escapes time, and the Taros turn to sand. Ryotaro picks up their sand and feels an extremely close connection. A connection in the form of a phone called the Keitoros. Momo and Ryotaro fight the last of Gao's Imogen, when they get a call from Urataros, telling them to activate the phone. With the four Taros connected through Ryotaro, they become Kamen Rider Deno Climax Form. Climax. I was never the biggest fan of this design. It's a cluster of the Taros and the colors sharing one body. I'm all for an asymmetrical design, though maybe not like this. It's overall not terrible, in fact, I'd probably get a figure of it. For an explanation on the Taro's return, owner says that it's thanks to Ryotaro's strong will. You're gonna want to keep that in mind when I bring up a certain other form, but let me say it again. Ryotaro's, not the Imogen, Ryotaro's, is will, is what brought the Taro's back to become Climax form, okay? A few episodes later, Yuto tries to save a civilian from an Imogen, but there's something Yuto's been keeping secret for a while. He only has limited uses of the Zeronos cards and he's down to his last one. Ryotaro arrives in time to help the civilian, so Yuto doesn't have to. A bit later, Airi's cafe is being repossessed by a man named Fujishiro. He was turned down by Airi years ago, so now that she's in debt with a lot of money, he's making a deal to marry him or pay up. Airi rejects the offer, and Fujishiro asks if she still has feelings for Sakura Yuto, but she thinks that name is only associated with Ryotaro's friend. Airi is then kidnapped by an Imogen, and Ryotaro gets hospitalized after a battle, so the one left to save Airi is Yuto. The Imogen taunts him to transform, though Ryotaro pushes himself enough to fight back. Yuto runs to save Airi and they share a moment. She says she wanted to save the cafe because it's important to her, to Ryotaro. 
and to one more person. There's no time left as Ryotaro is in need of serious help. Yuto doesn't hesitate and transforms. Having only so many Zeronos cards isn't the biggest issue here. The biggest consequence is that every time Yuto transforms, something important is lost. Airi barely has the name of the third person on the tip of her tongue, but then she forgets. You might be wondering where Hana has been all this time. Well, in a case of real life writing the plot, Hana's actress was suffering from overwork and stress, so unfortunately she had to leave the show. I was going to bring up a few things about her character in the season, but this is more important than some transforming peach monster. I'm definitely no authority on this matter, I just want to tell you guys to take care of yourselves. Your mental and physical well-being should be a top priority. Serious note aside, Hana was absent for about 3 episodes so something had to be done for her character to continue, and that led to a railway screwing into a mountain. Owner notes that this phenomenon can only mean that something's changed in our timeline. Ryotaro gets a call from Hana to meet up with him. His bad luck has him almost get beaten up, until a little girl saves him. Though she seems very familiar, because this girl is a younger version of Hana, nicknamed Kohana. Ominous, isn't it? What's even more strange is that Sakurai decides to push things along by himself by entering the Zero Liner to give Yuto more Zeronos cards. Denub understands that Deno can't keep fighting alone, but he also doesn't want Yuto to be alone if more people are going to keep forgetting him. Though this time, the consequences are much worse. Eventually, the Zeronos cards will erase Yuto himself. As if that wasn't bad enough, the Taros feel as if their time is going to be up soon. They came from the future so they're able to catch glimpses of it, and it doesn't show them together with Ryotaro. They already begin to drift apart during one fight with an Imagen, leaving Ryotaro to fight in platform. Seconds feels like minutes to him, then the Taros hatch a plan to fight as one. Ryotaro uses the K-Taros and summons a giant sword that resembles his Imogen friends. With the bond of all four Taros within the sword, and even the Den Liner itself, Ryotaro becomes Comrider Deno Liner form. The Taros created a carousel to represent whose power is at the helm on the sword. I, I love that. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I just love it. <laughs> Though it's funny that Ryotaro can't think of a finisher name, so all he says is... <laughs> The design of liner form is really cool to me. There's a little of each color representing the taros. Normally I'd think something like this would be too simple, but the torso up has just enough for me to think it's not a crayon. So would you guys like to hear about color theory? <sighs> Alright, it was inevitable. And unfortunately this isn't the last time I'm going to bring this up, but we have to talk about final forms. Okay, personally, I don't really like the term final form, especially if taken literally, because it alone is too blanket of a name to use. Final as in, the last form a writer ever gets, the last form used within the show. If it's meant for the season, then what about movie forms? If a writer defeats the main villain with a super form, or heck, even their base form, would those be considered their final forms too? If you consider the super form the final form, then what do you consider the form after that? Isn't that the final final form? You know what? I don't even think final form is the official term for them. I'd rather they be called something else. Anything. Um, fish form, mega form, super mega form, ultra mega form, special form, anything aside from final form. Would you guys be okay if I actually started calling them, like, special form? Ultimate is Kuga's special form. Shining is Agito's special form. Money is Toei's special form. <laughs> oh right, that sounds really lame. I personally think that the final form refers to how they're marketed. What level is the form being pushed at? Is it one of the final major merchandise to be sold that has to do with Ryder? Okay, so what does this have to do with Deno? Well, what do you think is Deno's final form? Climax or Liner? Up to this point, you're gonna say, it's liner, why the heck would it be climax? But there are arguments for both sides. Let's see what you guys had to say when I asked on Twitter. Lady Toku fan states, Climax form is the final form of the Taros as it symbolizes their bond with each other despite their constant disagreements with one another. Meanwhile, Liner is Ryotaro's final form as he can now fight on his own without relying on his Imagen. So it depends on which Deno you're talking about. If you're about just the Imagen, then it's Climax. Deno is Ryotaro himself, 
then it's Liner. Christian says, Liner came last. Plus, I feel like on a narrative level, it makes sense for Ryotaro to learn to fight on his own. Ian Titular says, Official merchandise is with Liner. Merchandising is greater than anything else. Though my favorite response comes from Ultimate Momo Stan on Discord who says, Technically, all the image and forms are essentially add-ons. Platform itself is regular Dano, so liner form is the final form. Ultimately, the decision comes down to Toei and they've always shown liner. Yes, you can still say Climax can be symbolic for the image but I'm not gonna argue with the people who've taken down my channel at least twice. And when it comes to my personal thought on it, if you're talking about Den O as a whole, the whole season, all the movies combined, Den O from the future, Den O from the past, Den O and every single cameo ever, I'm gonna say it's Liner. Yes, the Imogen can become Dan O, but if you think about Dan O as a common Rider, nobody else is controlling it, no Imogen, no Ryotaro, no one, Dan O as a standalone common Rider itself, its final form, would be Liner. Oh boy, that was a lot more than I was expecting. <laughs> I need a break. Oh my gosh, it's been this long? Jeez. Uh, do I have anyone for guests? Daito Modachi? The animator? Bro, I definitely wasn't expecting him. Let's see what he has to say. Dano is actually my third favorite Kamen Rider series, right after Gaim, but why is it my favorite? For one thing, the opening Climax Jump is one of my favorite openings in any Kamen Rider season. Even the version where the other Imagines sing it was charming in its own way. The Imagines who ally themselves with Ryotaro were the strong points of the show. Especially Momo. Seriously, his over-the-top behavior left me in stitches every time. In fact, the gif of him walking with this big dick energy got me to watch the show in the first place. As for Ryotaro, he's not really my favorite main rider, but he does have something that makes him stand out from the other ones. I was honestly impressed by the character development he undergoes in this season. Although he's still pretty soft-spoken throughout the season, his actions start becoming bolder as the season progress. Even though Deno can get pretty serious, it's still a fun season and I recommend every Kamen Rider fan to watch it even if it's a bit outdated in terms of CGI. I want to thank Marcos for allowing me to briefly talk about Danelle in this history video. Even though my main YouTube channel is mainly focused on 3D anime video game parodies, I talk about Kamen Rider on my Mina profile to a great extent. Anyway, thanks for having me. <laughs> Ryutaro seems to be bothered by something in episode 37. The voice that told him to kill Ryotaro is back, but Ryutaro is hesitant. Elsewhere, a young man looks up at the stars. Then he gets angry. The stars begin to move, setting his plan further in motion. This man has been putting thoughts into Ryota's head since the start, so they confront each other. His name is Kai and he offers Ryutaro another chance to betray his friends. Meanwhile, the rest of the Denliner crew stop at a station in the sands of time. Its station master, named Station Master, looks exactly like Owner, but I guess it's just our imagination. Kai is essentially our big bad of the season, a season that definitely did not need a big bad. Aside from being unnecessary, Kai is... There, I guess. He doesn't add much. Ryotaros' voice in his head? Eh, whatever. The Den Liner and Zero Liner going haywire? All fixed. Kai has a cool power where he can look through dates and change history. But like I said about time travel, if you can change time at will, then why not just kill your enemy at a vulnerable point? And besides, if I wanted a villain that was the opposite or the foil of the protagonist, then I'd watch Kuga, because that villain actually did things like this ten times better. And I definitely don't mean the quirk of like, oh my gosh, is my face looking mad because I sure am mad right now. Okay, moving on. If Kai wanted to kill one of the writers, then I think Yuta would be the easiest to erase since his timeline is unstable enough as it is. Just send an Imogen back and... Oh. He did. Well, time will be fixed as always, so Yuta will... not... come back? He's used too many Zeronos cards. The only people that remember him anymore are Owner, Kohana, and Ryotaro. Yuta wasn't a singularity point, so he didn't have time travel protection like Ryotaro. What about Sakurai? Kai says that every single Imagine ever sent back in time, even from episode 1, were sent specifically to kill him off. That's... actually pretty cool. Anyways, 
With Yuto erased from time, our new timeline has Deneb be contracted to Ryotaro, and Aidi is no longer haunted by lost memories. So she's truly happy. If Deneb is with Ryotaro now, does that mean we got to see a Deno Vega form? Kai's here for a fight, and so is a Zero Liner, along with Yuto. Despite not being a singularity point, Yuto can't truly be erased from time because the Zeronos cards act as save points. Our two writers transform, but now Yuto has a red side to his card. Yuto and one of Kai's imagined grunts go to the past. During their fight, Yuto has flashes of ID. Then he inserts the red card. <laughs> Memories of ID begin to rust, turning the Zeronos armor from green to red, becoming Zeronos Zero Form. <laughs> After the battle, Ryotaro checks Sakurai's pocket watch. It's rusty. Wanna know something weird? Ryotaro told the story of Sakurai disappearing from Aidi's life, but there are no records of it anywhere, as if Ryotaro isn't remembering it correctly. It's been one year since Sakurai disappeared and Ryotaro gets a delivery. It looks like Sakurai's pocket watch, but with no inscription on the back. He doesn't remember buying it, but the shop owner says Ryotaro has to deliver it in exactly one year. An Imogen appears, so Ryotaro is about to chase him back in time. But Yuto tells him to stop. Going back to that point will reveal a lost memory that shouldn't be uncovered. Ryotaro defeats the Imogen, then sees Aidi by a lake, along with Zeronos being controlled by Sakurai and he's fighting Kai. However, Sakurai lost this battle, so Kai erases his timeline. As long as the singularity point is around to fix the past, the present will be restored. But there's a slight chance that it doesn't, just like with Hana's timeline. In the past, Yuto and Ryotaro save Airi from an Imogen. She's aware of who's been protecting her timeline, but memories are forgotten for a reason. She can't stay for long since she has to relive the day that Kai erased her time. Episode 48, Opposite Goodbyes. After some events, Ryotaro gets tossed back to a year before Aidy lost her memories. He runs into himself who's scared enough to say that Aidy is having a baby, but our Ryotaro doesn't remember that. Aidy tells him to forget, so that way the baby can be safe from the Imogen. It's a singularity point like Ryotaro. This is the lost memory that finally came back, as Ryotaro remembers a third pocket watch being meant for the baby. Meanwhile, Kai is gathering power for his final move. The Final Episode the climax goes on, no matter what. Kai is planning to erase this timeline like he did with Sakurai and Aidi. With the Imogen going crazy, it's up to Ryotaro and Momotaro to protect their friends. Ryotaro decides on a wish. He wants Momo to fight with him to the end. Yuto is out of cards and Deneb is starting to fade, but it's too late to do anything. Kai destroys the city, but this point and the future are safe. Because there is one singularity point that both Kai and Ryotaro forgot about. Aidi and Sakurai's daughter, Hana. Deneb has one last card given to him by Sakurai as a last resort. If used, then Sakurai Yuto will cease to exist. The final battle has begun as the Denliner pulls up with all the Taros, Sieg included. The last of the Imogen are defeated and Kai fades away, erased from time, and my memory because what the heck was the point of Kai? Just, just, just let the show go on without a main villain, they didn't need one. But I digress. Although, the last of the Imogen really means last, as the Taros begin to disappear. Ryotaro falls on his knees and cries. In a nearby ditch, the Taros are waiting for the right time to pop out and show themselves. They are able to stay because of Ryotaro's strong memories with them. And... see too, I guess. Although... I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Ryotaro gives his pass to Owner and says goodbye to the Denliner crew, along with Yuto and Deneb. Momo says that they'll meet again in the future. Now hold tight, there's still a lot more to talk about, but I want to bring up something that's been on my mind for a while. My expectations were a bit skewed for Den O. I was thinking it would be a fun season from what I've seen other cameos and other shows, so that was at least what I got. However, the extra expectations came from how hyped up Deno is. Ask anyone's top 10, even top 5 writer seasons and Deno will most likely be there. Everyone I talked to has always said it's one of the best seasons, the characters are so good, the stories are great, and they are. 
Really, I think this is a good show and I'll recommend it to anyone. However, as someone who likes talking about Kamen Rider nonstop, I feel like, I feel like something's missing. You don't have to keep this in mind if you don't care about my opinion and just want to recap. I'm more saying this for my own sake. As I've had conflicting thoughts ever since I started episode 1, I'll save the rest for the end so we can get the story over with. Who knows, maybe my opinion will change with the movies. Our first extra movie comes with Climax Deca. It starts with a car chase and Rudoturo with a shotgun? The Denliner crew created a detective agency to capture any rogue imagine. However, a new type of enemy has appeared. The Fangires. On the Denliner, we're introduced to a new recruit, Suzuki Kazuya. His shtick is that he wants to be a great detective just like his father. He's here to solve a case of owners missing Deno Pass. An evil organization has popped up ran by Negataros. I actually really like that color scheme for Dark Momo. But where the heck did he come from? Deneb and Yuto have been doing their own infiltration of the organization and our bodyguards. Kazuya and Ryotaro investigate, leading them to two people digging something nearby. The fashionable young man points them to a building that has evil activity. It's the Denliner crew versus Negataros' crew, though Negataros has a trick up his sleeve. Yes. I hope I don't have to explain the motif on this one. The fight continues as the young man from earlier arrives, along with a certain bat to help him transform into Common Rider Kiva. That's it. After arresting the organization, Kazuya is sent back in time to witness a couple detectives question a rather flirty man. Wait, Hajime was a detective in the past life? Apparently he's Kazuya's dad? That would have made Blade a lot weirder than it already is. Team Denliner will continue to work on their detective agency. At least until I bring up that this is the only movie to have him do this. Yeah, weirdly enough, their agency is never referenced again, leading to most of the fandom saying that this is just an alternate universe or timeline. In a way, isn't everything canon to Deno? Cop out aside, I'll tell you guys my opinions of the movies after I get through them because boy do I have some... not nice things to say. Our next movie is Sadaba Deno, Final Countdown. Momo asks why everything has to be so final. There are bound to be sequels, right? The Taros and Kohana are out on a stroll where they come across some Imogen and a shadowy figure. He takes out a belt and transforms into Kamen Rider Yuki's skull form. <laughs> Dang, that's a cool looking suit. It looks familiar, doesn't it? That's because it was constructed using the Gao suit from Oda Tanjo, meaning that we might never see Gao again unless Toei wants to shill out the money to remake a suit that doesn't matter much. Still, I liked Gao's design, so Yuki is just as good to me. During a fight, Momo notices that Ryotaro's body is possessed by Yuki. Yuto and Deneb are here to help, but they might need an extra hand. Along comes a blue den liner with a new rider, an Imogen that no one recognizes. With a snap of his fingers, the Imogen, named Teddy, transforms into a sword and begins a countdown to where the rider will defeat Yuki's grunt. This is a new den -o, literally called New den -o. In universe, he's referred to as any other Deno, just from a future generation. And by the way, I love this suit so much that it was the first ever figure I bought of Kamen Rider, and yeah, okay, I I, I just love it so much. I, I don't know what else to say. It's great. He untransforms and introduces himself. Nogami Kotaro, station master warned owner of Yuki and Ryotaro, so owner called upon Ryotaro's grandson. Kamen Rider Yuki is part of a gang led by a man named Shiro. His phantom train is one used for the dead, whereas the Denliners is for the living. Kotaro is very cocky, so he takes on Yuki himself on the sands of time. And damn, is it still so pretty. Kotaro gets badly beaten, so he was knocked down a peg, which reminds Momo of Ryotaro, the constant fighter, no matter what. The next morning, the Taros fight against Shiro's army. Momo is almost defeated, but it was a trick to let Yuki's guard down in order to possess Ryotaro. They defeat Yuki, but his pass flies out towards Shiro, allowing him to transform into Kamen Rider Yuki hijack form. Luckily, Yuto and Hana arrive with gifts from owner. Deno passes for everyone. Alright, so Shiro's stick is that he wanted to revive his dead lover. Kotaro's gimmick is that he is boring. No wait, he's a cocky brat. 
He said that he has a grudge against his grandfather for passing down bad luck, always being compared to him and also because Kotaro is a very country name given to him by Ryotaro. Well, after all that, Kotaro returns to his timeline and his grandfather, who we won't see again for at least another decade. Yeah, about that. Ryotaro's actor, Takeru Sato, basically created another Odegiri effect. Wait, this is the first time I talked about that, huh? The Odagiri effect is what happened when Toei casted Joe Odagiri to play Yusuke Godai in Kamen Rider Kuga. Despite me taking it a little bit too seriously, Kamen Rider is a show whose main audience are kids, but it turned out that mothers were watching it just for Joe Odagiri. Ever since then, there was more of a focus casting on handsome men in Kamen Rider. I mean, Showa era protagonists were good looking too, however as I said, there's more of a focus this time. Takuro Sato was basically the second coming. There are other factors on what made Deno popular, but he was definitely a big one. In fact, he may have one of the biggest post Kamen Rider careers out of every other main writer in the franchise, so much so that it seemed almost impossible to ever get him back. Final Countdown's ending theme is called Climax Jump the Final, appropriate as it's Ryotro's final appearance for a long time. Ah, you thought I wouldn't bring up the music, huh? I'll be honest guys. I just love the music so much. I wanted to dedicate a significant amount of time to it. Brace yourselves, there is a lot of music to talk about. We'll start where one does. The I already love Climax Jump, but this emphasizes everything I enjoy about the song and the season, culminated by the Taros. I put this as a top theme in one of my countdowns a long time ago, and it's still there a bit above the AAA version. Not to mention that the music video is a lot of fun. Of course, the suit actor is only pantomiming singing, though I can easily get past that with how entertaining it all is. And that rap section by Ryotaros might be one of my most favorite things ever. Guys, I, I really love Climax Jump, and that's only one, or well, two, songs out of a whole library. Next, we have our insert theme, starting with Double Action. <laughs> As if Takaru Sato wasn't talented enough, he also sings most of these songs, and he can also dance. It's not too often that we get characters sing their own songs, and I don't necessarily need to hear if they can sing in the first place, but it adds a lot of personality and flair. Double action is carried by that opening riff which can be heard throughout several music pieces, and the songs are catchy. I've always been a fan of constantly evolving music, adding modern electronics to rock music or more futuristic sounding synths which might be why I love Double Action. And there are like six of them, one for each Taros, Sieg, Teddy, and another for the Climax Deca movie called Double Action Climax Form, which I can equate to Climax Jump Denliner Form. This music is so fun and having one for each form is, I don't even know the right word. This is the cheesiest thing ever, but they're like all great songs. Although, I feel like I'm forgetting Coffee Form? Man, Dano is oozing with personality. Don't forget about Yuto, <laughs> since he sings his own insert theme too, Action Zero. It doesn't sound as happy as the others, huh? I feel it. Like, a lot. The opening lyrics say something along the lines of, I wander through the time lost to me when I hear your voice. If my own existence is forgotten, where will these emotions lead to? Then a second verse lyric says, Strength from loneliness hurts the most. I understand this, so we'll fight together. Those lyrics being sung by Deneb. I'm getting chills just saying that. Meaning aside, I do think Action Zero is a nice song on its own. At least, it's one I'll never forget. Oh hey, Liner Form gets an injured song sung by Ryotaro alone. It's called Real Action. How does something give you a nostalgic feeling when you didn't grow up with it? I don't know, but Real Action is hitting me in the heart. Though not the strongest track in Dan O, I still think it's up there. Maybe because it isn't as grand as something like Double Action, but that's alright, it's still fun. Oh, I'm sorry, I must have gotten the wrong song. This is from a different season. Wait, this is Deno's movie theme? If We Met in a Dream by 175R. This sounds... extremely out of place, like it was meant for an earlier season. That's kind of my only criticism of this song, and it's barely even valid, but I digress. It's a nice piece. 
Then we reached where we almost first started. Climax jumped the final. What a way to end the Yotaro Saga. This sounds like an ending, but a continuation at the same time. With the energy of Climax Jump never ending, we'll be on this time trip and ride forever. Sorry, does that sound too cheesy? If there was ever a soundtrack for my life, I'd want it to be Deno's. You know, I've only talked about the vocal themes. If you want even more good music, then I highly suggest the original music score. It's great too. We had all this talk of finales and endings, but the ride isn't over. Yeah. There's more. Now normally I'd bring up any future cameos, movies included, during the season that is airing that year. For example, Ryotaro makes one appearance in an anniversary movie way down the line, but I'm not going to be recapping that movie here because it's mostly for the writer of that season. Even if Deno was part of it, the cameo was minor. Here I'm focusing on the movies that are strictly about Deno as a season. Plus, it'd be really weird if I gave the Climax deck a recap during Kiva since it's not really a Kiva movie. However, we will be skipping through Deno's inclusion within a certain passing through Kamen Rider because, again, that's his season that Deno just so happened to have an arc for. I do need to bring up that since Takuru Sato isn't here anymore, Ryotaro was de-aged like Hana due to some... time stuff. While there is a build-up to this next movie like there was for Ode Tanjo, it's not necessary to know. Alright, now begins what's considered as Cho Deno. Starting with Cho Deno, the Onigashima warship. Uh, e evil villain stuff, yada yada. A new city kid isn't used to rule life after his mother passed away, so he runs off, until he comes across an Oni boss and is saved by Deneb. You might recognize these Oni mooks as a monster of the week from Conrader Ryuki, which then became mooks in Conrader Dragonite. There were a lot of suits left over, so they were repurposed for this movie. I think that's interesting enough. So Kotaro and young Ryotaro are here to give this boy, you, a ticket to the Denliner. Due to some time travel shenanigans that we'll see in a future season, the Taros are somewhat scattered in time. Time. Three of those Taros are possessing obligatory Kiva cameos. <laughs> you, Kohan, and Rotro go back in time to find them, where they enter a photo studio and see Sieg possess a strange man named Tsukasa Karia. Well, at least he has a lead on where Momo is. Sometime later, the Oni take Kotro because he's lame and makes an exchange for the Denliner. I definitely wouldn't trade a time-traveling train for Kotaro. I mean, I can easily find cardboard in any recycling bin. The only take the liner where we see the most image in shenanigan they've ever shenaniganed. <laughs> a fight breaks out, the end is here for his own obligatory cameo, the title Onigashima Warship is summoned. Fun fact, the Oni Brother suits were repurposed from the reboot Ichigo movie that I'll get to in another season. Tsukasa returns Sieg and transforms, Dena possesses Kotaro to get a Vega form, which we really should have gotten with Ryotaro. Fight, 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 Yu has returned to his own time and promises to meet Dena again. Owner is surprised that we never learned of Yu's full name until Yu shouts to the viewer that his name is Sakura Yuto. <sighs> what a twist. What a shame that a great song like Cho Climax Jump is used for this movie. The song is really the best part. I'd even consider it just as good as Climax Jump Denliner version. Instead of being energetic, it's somber but hopeful for the future. Made even better that the cast sings it together. I'd kind of prefer if this was used over Climax Jump the final, but they're both so good. I know I'm repeating myself, but guys, the music just really means a lot to me. Onigashima Worship, on the other hand, does not. I can't believe I watched this movie four times already, and it's gotten more boring every time. My worst fears of my initial expectations came true in this movie. Haha, <laughs> look at all the funny Imogens. Villains are evil because... Ooh. You is actually Sakurai Yuto? Uh, awesome, I, I guess. I never saw that coming. I consider this movie the lowest point of Deno. It's just straight up not good. I'm sure there's gonna be defenders and hey, that's okay, I guess I'm feeling the Deno fatigue at this point. Although now we reach the final stretch with the Cho Deno trilogy. The first in this series is Episode Red, Zero No Star Twinkle, a story about Yuto and Aidi after the events of the season. Sakura and Yuto are technically the same person, but different at the same time. It's confusing for Aidi. They try to spend time together, but this isn't the Yuto that Aidi recognizes. Sakurai would always enjoy her coffee, but Yuto can't sip it without adding an enormous amount of sugar. Aidi brings up how Yuto can be his own person now. He's not bound to Sakurai. Or her. 
<laughs> oh, look, there's that meme of Momo saying he's been waiting for a month to climax. Haha, <laughs> I get it. I was 12 once. <laughs> Ugh. In the end, Yuto takes ID for a ride to see the stars. And then, that's it. Again, I think the best part is the music. Action Zero 2010 is a beautiful piece and I love its somber tone added with a piano. And this might sound surprising, but I like the story of Episode Red. I feel like it should have been told within the show since my summary was only like 10% of the movie, but anyway. I want to know more about Yuto and Aidi. How are they gonna act with Sakurai gone? Is it worth discarding the past for the same person with a different face? The story and execution are unpolished, which makes the movie fall apart. Honestly, if the Taros or the Deadliner crew in general weren't in the movie, or at least that much, and there was more of a focus on Yuto and Aidi, then yeah, definitely this would have been way better. If anything, I'm more disappointed because, you know, it's taken me four months to climax, haha. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> Episode Blue, the dispatched Imogen is neutral. Teddy is taken away from Kotaro for a while, so Kotaro learns how to fight for himself and learns the true meaning of friendship, since his bond with Teddy was so strong. Episode Yellow, Treasure DN Pirates. It's focused on Kamen Rider DN trying to shoot himself, but is stopped by the Time Police and a new writer, Kamen Rider G. Dano. Hey, she One of his first lines is saying how his mother left him. Um, okay. Go off, I guess. Image and shenanigans. DN steals a treasure and just so happens to show G. Dano that his mother is actually a nice person. The G. Dano suit goes crazy so its user gives DN the K-Touch to become DN Complete. Gal was supposed to be in this lineup but his suit is gone and Skull is here because Eternal didn't debut yet. G. Dano's user meets his mom who is really nice. The Dan Liner rides off into the stars. Yay, that was Dano. Well... That was all of Deno minus the Hyper Battle video and the Crayon Shin-Chan crossover that are minor. The season and movies feel almost completely different from each other. The Taros aren't that flanderized in the extra media, but they do give that one-note personality more than I'd like. And to be fair, they aren't the main focus. With adult Ryotaro gone, the Taros themselves are Kamen Rider Deno. So you'd expect them to be in the spotlight, but... No, there are other characters to focus on, and I like the idea. They were mostly unnecessary ideas, though at least they're here, for better and for worse. Team Denliner are detectives? That's a nice continuation that was only in one movie. A new generation of Deno with one of my favorite suits of all time? Awesome, I just wish it wasn't Kotaro. Yuto getting a backstory of when he was young was okay. I don't think it added anything though. Yuto and Aidu's story is beautiful, even if it didn't get the attention it needed. A cultural focused movie could improve the character. Kinda? Time Police, great. That should have been in the show and not focus on DN whatsoever. The movies as a whole are a mixed bag to me that range from boring to okay, I guess. I'm all for continuing a season, good or not, and hey, there's a lot to watch. Yes, there will always be fans of anything, I'm just giving my own personal opinion. In a lot of ways, I wish Den O didn't end with the trilogy, or at least it should have ended with episode red and not the end episode yellow. In other ways, I'm happy it did, because I know you'll enjoy them more than I ever will. Because... Kamen Rider Den O just isn't for me. The one word I have yet to say that so many others describe the season as is... Charming. Everyone I've ever talked to about Deno has always at least mentioned that it has charm. I didn't really think of it like that until about halfway when Yuto goes into Vega form and Deno says that his face is decoration because he didn't want to deceive the enemy. That's very cute. Well, that's the thing. My opinion isn't what matters. It's yours. If you want a recommendation, yes, 100%, I encourage you to watch Kamen Rider Deno. The characters are, as everyone says, charming and the stories are beautiful. If that's all you want, then you can end the video here, because I need to get more off my chest. I think Kamen Rider Deno is a good show, but I just don't get it. Sup, this is the online Not world. you. Uh, what?
Hey, uh, my name's Allsace, and Kamen Rider Deno is special to me because it has such a colorful and diverse cast of characters. It's one of the main reasons. My name is Marcos, and Kamen Rider Deno is special to me because it's special to everyone else.